Now, did you know about bees and taking care of bees when you joined? I did not. You know, it's something they failed to mention in the interview <laughs> when you're interviewing for this job at the Hyatt Regency Atlanta that not only are you a chef, but you're also a beekeeper. You're also a gardener, but it's a lot of fun. We've learned a lot about bees. It's just nice to be able to see where your food's coming from, producing honey on the top of the roof in an urban environment. It's something special. So, Chef McEwen? Yeah. That, that's how you, I, I didn't know, like McCohen, McEwen? Well, you know, McEwen. most Americans say McEwen. In mm. Ireland, it's McEwen. M but McKeown? I don't hold it. I don't hold it against McKeown. You called that. You did. You got it right. Mine actually. said it. Yeah. McKeown. Yeah, we pronounce every letter. <laughs> you pronounce every letter. In oh, America, yeah. we just throw away letters left and Yeah, right. you do. We're gonna open up. We'll look through the hives so you can kind of see how the bees produce the honey, and then we'll go downstairs and extract some honey. That's awesome. Okay. We're gonna pop this open right here. You can come right in, Walter, and you can look right down inside the hive. You can see them here. We're going to take one up so you can see what it looks like. These guys, this is capped. This honey is actually ready to go. But is we've it? already pulled most of the honey we want to produce honey with because the honey we're leaving on the hive is for them to sustain over the winter. Oh, look, I got a little friend on the camera. Yeah. And a little friend. So we're estimating, and the only way you can do is really estimate, about yeah. 350,000 bees right now between the four hives. So each one of these is its own little partition? Yep. So this is number two. And then I'm gonna show you how heavy this is. And how heavy it is, is how much honey's in here. Grab it. Oh, I'm just gonna hold it. Yeah. Oh my, oh my goodness. So there's probably about 90 pounds of honey in there. Yes. It's quite heavy, right? It's quite heavy. So you see this Thank metal you. bar? And that makes sure the queen is below this. Everything above is then honey. So why does the queen have to be down there? Because if she doesn't, she'll start laying eggs and more drones, and you don't want drones inside your honey. Oh, okay. So everything above it is pure honey oh. with no eggs. So all this is honey. How long did it take you to learn and be comfortable with this? You know what? I've been here three and a half years, but I'm very lucky. Our pastry chef is very involved with the bees, and he grew up raising bees. Oh. So that made it really easy have someone that was knowledgeable. But also we work very closely with a master beekeeper uh -huh. and she comes and helps us out too. Did you ever think you'd be a beekeeper? Never. <laughs> so what we do is the air conditioning handlers, the excess water coming down, um, come in here, then it feeds to them naturally, to the beds, so they're naturally fed with water. These actually have flavor. And to be thinking you're 25 floors above inner city Atlanta and you're just eating fresh tomatoes. Um, it's really nice as a chef to be able to produce in the middle of the inner city um, urban gardening and really also for our guests who eat up in Polaris, you see behind us, that's our blue dome. And they're wondering what this really beautiful area is. You look up at this mural that was done for us so they can see the, the bees. So here we've pulled off um, a super. We're gonna take one of the frames out. You can see how really nice this is capped really beautifully. What do you mean by cap? See this white wax? Mm -hmm. That's the bees capping it when they're finished producing. So they're storing it for the winter. Unfortunately, we went and stole that from them okay. and making a honey for ourselves. So what Adam's doing with a serrated knife, he's going to cut the wax off the top. You can see right here and then what we also do with the excess wax, we're melting it and making um, candles out of it. We have an extractor right here, and inside in the extractor we have four, high, or four frames, already uncapped, ready to go. So we're gonna turn on the extractor, and it starts spinning. So you can see the honey dripping down the sides. Look at the amount of honey in the bottom. We're checking each frame. All the honey is gone from that side. You turn, see the honey is empty. Now how'd you first meet Keith and Nikki? You know what, I, um, I was looking for an ice cream that was made locally and I was buying milk from a local farmer 
and he said hey I started selling my milk to a local ice cream maker and I was like well I'd love to find out about that and we got in touch and I started buying the ice cream and then when I worked with Hyatt and we started doing our own honey we said hey this makes a lot of sense to partner with High Road they're the only right ice cream we use in the hotel and um, we partnered with them to make the very first honey ice cream as a, a 50 year celebration and it's great to be able to showcase an amazing local product to customers that are coming from all over the world to Atlanta and showcase a, an amazing family that produces amazing ice cream. Oh wow, look at that. So the mesh is capturing any leftover wax that may have happened in the hive. There's a little bit of wax in there, so this mesh is gonna make it super clear. You can see at the very bottom, it coming out in the camera. And so my guest today, once we get all of them done, we will get another 30 pounds of honey. Oh yeah, you want to taste raw honey right now? This is the pure raw honey right now. Pure Straight raw from. honey. Straight from the... Ooh, shit. Sorry. I got a little on your floor. That's okay. I need a napkin. Arlo, you want to taste Holy cow. The, uh, so you just saw this honey about 10 minutes ago on the roof, and now you're eating wow. honey. Ooh, jeez. I need... I need... I got to clean up on aisle five. So where, where are you from? I'm from Ireland. Um, I'm from Limerick. A yeah. small little village just outside the city called Palace Henry mm -hmm. and um, I grew up there and done a culinary training in Ireland before moving to US to do a master's in culinary education at Johnson & Wales in Providence, Rhode Island. And then this is how we sell it in the market. But you can see the logo from the honey. And then for our guests in events, in the sexy cups. <laughs> we love sexy cups. We do it too. So our guests in events get to try it like this. 24, 22 floors up in the main tower. So what you see is the John Portman design, really cool structures. As you look down, you'll see that the lines, really pretty look. I really love it. So we'll go 22 floors up. Mm -hmm. Hope you don't mind heights. Oh no. We're gonna look over the city briefly through these windows. Then we go back into the building, back out of the building, and then back into the Blue Dome. So now we are inside the Blue Dome. This is it. We're closed right now, but this is the main restaurant. Uh, they put out amazing, they change the menu every six weeks. But to have four burners, an oven, and a flat top, and to put out a full menu, it's pretty spectacular. Wow. Shall we eat some ice cream? I think so. You got a sexy cup, ice cream. I got a pint. Ooh, a sexy cup. I might cup. as well eat out of the pint. I got a sexy cup, look at that. We love sexy cups at High Road. And chefs love sexy cups, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> okay, so we just had the raw honey downstairs. This is about as close to tasting that raw honey. It's yeah, almost that same flavor. Well, today when we go back downstairs, we'll be handing over the honey for you to produce the next batch. Literally tastes like the raw honey. See, that's the one thing that I don't know how our chefs do it. That they make it taste just like the raw. Because, you know, I, I had a long discussion with somebody about coffee ice cream and how it always tastes like cream and sugar. And then we have a Thai street coffee that literally tastes like a cup of coffee. Well, I think when you look at production and mass production, it's become more scientific and also more mass produced. But when you have chefs making a product, mm -hmm. that love of the art and what they do, we all love about cooking. So there's real love that goes into the food and you can see that in the ice cream. 